All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. Allah Ta'ala has blessed us tremendously by guiding us to Islam. Allah Ta'ala has blessed us tremendously by giving us a situation conducive to good health. All the things we need are available for our good health. All of the things we need are available for our treatment when we fall ill. All of the things we need are available to pro provide us with shelter, to pro provide us with clothing, to ward off the harm of the elements from ourselves. These are all from the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us. And we can acknowledge those blessings by simply saying alhamdulillah. As we mentioned recently, if we, if we, we can acknowledge Allah for the individual blessings, but we can praise Allah because He is the giver of all blessings. And when we acknowledge the individual blessing, our acknowledgement in the form of shukr is confined to that blessing. But when we acknowledge Allah as the giver of all blessings, then our acknowledgement which is moved from shukr to hamd, from thankfulness to praise, is acknowledging Allah for every blessing He's ever given from the beginning of time to the time we find ourselves in to the end of time. Alhamdulillah. Brothers and sisters, it's very important for us as Muslims to understand our religion. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned at the beginning of a longer hadith related by Muawiyah radiallahu anhu. مَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ قال صلى الله عليه وسلم مَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ The one that Allah desires good for, He gives him or her a sound understanding of the religion. The fiqh here is fahm. This is before fiqh developed into an, a, a technical term in the divine legislative system. Here it means linguistically understanding. The one Allah desires good for. He gives him or her a sound understanding of the religion. And one of the ways some of us, not all, perhaps not many, certainly not most, but some of us misunderstand the religion by thinking that Islam doesn't want us to aspire for greatness. Islam doesn't want us to aspire for great wealth. Islam doesn't want us to aspire for great knowledge. Just the fardain, yakfini hadha. Al-furud al-ayniha. This is my basic obligations. That's all I want. I was in Damascus. And one of the students who had recently came, we went to visit one of the great sheikhs there. And he asked me to translate. And he said, tell the sheikh I came here and I don't want to become a big scholar. I just want to learn my fardain and the basics of my religion. And the sheikh, he said, tell him, why don't you want to be a great scholar? When Allah says in the Quran, وَجْعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ imama." Make us leaders for the righteous. Why don't you want to be a leader for the righteous? But he said, you should want this not for the aggrandizement of yourself, but for the service to the people. How can we serve if we don't have money? How can we serve if we don't have knowledge? How can we serve if we don't have education? How can we serve if we don't have worldly experience in this or that area? So we should aspire for greatness, brothers and sisters. Allah Ta'ala mentions in the Qur'an, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْهُمْ أَئِمَّةً يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا لَمَّا صَبَرُوا وَكَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا يُوقِنُونَ We made from them leaders who guided nations. In this case, they guided the Bani Israel. So they were great leaders, and their names we know in history. The names of the prophets and leaders who led the Bani Israel. And the general meaning is applicable for every nation, every community. So we want great people, and we want people who aspire for greatness. 
But we need to understand that greatness, it cannot come from us. If we aspire to push ourselves up, the maximum extent will be eight or nine feet. Some of us are six feet tall. We can reach two feet over ourselves, over our heads. So we can push ourselves up eight or nine feet. That's it. If we rely on ourselves. But if we seek greatness through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we seek greatness relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we seek greatness seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then there is no limit to how great we can be. There's no limit to how great we can be because Allah Ta'ala has unlimited strength, unlimited power, unlimited resources, unlimited boundaries if we try to confine His power. There are no expanses, no physical, no limitations. So there's no end to our potential if that potential is manifested through Allah. And our early, our, our great sages, those people who examined the teachings and sources of the religion, they understood that. The great scholar and sage Ibn Ata'illah, Siskandari, Rahimahullah, may Allah have mercy on him. He says in his aphorism, his hikam, Idfin wujuda kafi ardil khumul. So bury your existence in the earth of obscurity. And that part which subsequently grows up, that is not from the part of the seed that has not been buried, its fruit will never be proper or complete. So what does this mean? It is it, explaining to us a process that everyone who's seeking nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should understand. And that is, the beginning of greatness is not to consciously seek it through oneself. And his, hence, idfin wujudak fi ardil khumul. Bury your existence in the earth of obscurity. Bury your ego in the earth of obscurity. And that ego is like a seed. Once you've done that, then Allah takes over. He said, He didn't say, That which grows up from that part which has not been buried, its fruit will never be proper. This Aphorism reflects a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We mentioned it, one part we want to focus on, we mention it in its entirety. Charity will never decrease your, your money. And Allah increases no servant who has the power to pardon, to forgive, to overlook the faults of others except by giving that person more honor. And no one humbles themselves for the sake of Allah except that Allah elevates them. This is the part we want to focus on. So when he says idfan, there's a message in this. Some people might say that's surrender. They look at this aphorism, see, there you have it. Those Sufis, they're trying to get the Muslims to surrender. No initiative. That's why they, want, they don't, haven't had the Protestant work, work ethic. So they could succeed in the material world like, uh, like us. He's not saying that. Edfin, uh, Edfin wujudak. Bury yourself. It requires action. You have to get the shovel. You have to dig the hole. You have to climb down into the hole. It's not going to happen with no work. It's going to take action. Tawada takes action. Tawada is to consciously claim a station lower than one one could rightfully claim. You could rightfully claim the station of a scholar. You've studied. You've received certificates from your teachers and from your schools and universities. But you say, no, I'm just a talib. There's much more I have to learn. And that's true. 
And so you humble yourself. It takes a conscious effort and conscious af uh, action. So burying oneself in the earth of obscurity, adfin, wujudaka, bury yourself in the earth. One has to take the shovel, one has to dig the hole, one has to make the prayers on time, one has to try to fast outside of Ramadan occasionally. One has to, to try to control one's tongue, control one's eyes, control one's ears. That's what it means to bury oneself, to take the actions necessary, and one has to shy away from uh, being known in front of the people, not hasten to get in front of the people. Understand that if Allah puts you there, it's one thing. Don't put yourself there. And these are two different things. So the, the objective is not being known or being obscure. That's not the objective. The objective is not to seek it out. Because when one is seeking it out, they're seeking it out from that part of the seed that's not buried. So what comes up from that is not going to yield its proper fruits. But if Allah Ta'ala puts one in front, one goes with whatever Allah decrees for one. Qum Be where Allah has placed you. If Allah places you up front, be in front and give that its full rights. If Allah places you in the back, be in the back. Sweep the masjid, give it its full right. People come in, this is the cleanest masjid I've ever been in. MashaAllah. SubhanAllah. Give whatever Allah, wherever He places you, give it its full right. And then you will see amazing fruits, amazing results. Be a great janitor. If you're an imam, be a great imam. If you're a housewife, be a great housewife. If you're a teacher, be a great teacher. If you're a student, be a great student. Whatever Allah has placed you in, do it better than anyone else for the sake of Allah. And to make yourself a true servant of Allah Ta'ala and a true servant of the people. Do it in the most excellent way. That's what it's talking about. It's not talking about seeking out obscurity. Then obscurity becomes that shahwa khafiya. That Ibn uh, uh, Atta'ila talks about earlier in his compilation. He says that there's a shahwa khafiya. Those people who have worldly attainment by the grace of Allah. Halal income, lawful income, millions of dollars gained from a halal source. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن يجعله عوجا Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen All praises due to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds Allah Ta'ala has blessed us tremendously by guiding us to Islam Allah Ta'ala has blessed us tremendously by giving us a situation conducive to good health All the things we need are available for our good health all of the things we need are available for our treatment. Taqullaha <laughs> أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته حق تقاته ولا, ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها فكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة 
wa kulla dalalatin fin nar alhamdulillah alhamdulillah alladhi hadana li hadha wa ma kunna linahtadiya lawla an hadana Allah alhamdulillah alladhi anzala ala abdihi alkitab and instead of saying alhamdulillah boy i could do some work now all you people hating on the muslims you're in trouble because i'm taking my billions i'm opening up a muslim satellite station i'm taking my billions i'm building youth centers in everywhere there's some muslims so the kids will have a place to hang out with each other i'm taking my billions i'm gonna pay for zaytuna college with my billions they don't have to scrounge anymore because i'm here with my billions no he says no i want to go to mauritania to study islam and on the surface is laudable subhanallah zahid he wants to renounce the world that is so nice he wants to study he wants to go in the desert and not be tempted by all the fitna of modern society that's so nice but it's a hidden shafia a shahwa khafia it's a hidden lust because he really wants the people to say He's so pious, the brother had millions of dollars and he left it all and he went into the desert to live with the nomads and to study in the middle of the Sahara Desert. That brother is so pious and his shahwa, his hidden lust was fulfilled. No, we go wherever Allah puts us. If Allah puts us in the middle of Mauritania, we go out there and we be the best student out there. We don't complain about the malaria. <laughs> Best student out there MashaAllah And if Allah puts us in a situation To make a billion dollars We're the best businessman We got the nicest suits They're all halal We got the John J or John G or whatever Non-silk silk tie It's halal We give it his full right So he also says later on من أراد الخفاء أو الخمول فهو عبد الخفاء ومن أراد الظهور فهو عبد الظهور ومن استوى الحالان عنده فهو عبد الله The one who's chasing after obscurity is a slave of obscurity is a servant of obscurity and the one who's chasing after fame and to be in front of the people is a slave of fame and the one whom the two states are equal with him or her that is the servant of Allah be where Allah has placed you be where Allah has placed you and give that its full right and that's where greatness comes from because I'm not doing it for myself I'm trying to do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I'm trying to serve the people that's where greatness comes from. Brothers and sisters, each and every one, challenge ourselves, myself included, to how deep can I reach inside of myself to pull out some greatness? How much can I sacrifice for greatness? Muhammad Ali is great. Most influential athlete of the 20th century. But why is Ali great? He's not great because of his boxing skills. He's great because the world knows he was willing to give up his boxing career, to give up the heavyweight belt, to give up the fame, the fortune, the blinking lights, to give up his place in history as the greatest fighter ever. It's debatable. If Ali didn't go to, to get his title strip, had to take almost four years off from fighting at the prime of his career and then had to fight his way back into shape, it would be no debate. Who's the greatest fighter ever? Muhammad Ali. No, it's debatable. He had losses. Ken Norton, Spinks, Larry Holmes. It's debatable. But there's no debate as to who was the most influential athlete. Muhammad Ali, hands down. Why is he famous? Why is he known? Because he was willing to give up much to defend his beliefs. He was willing to stand up and say, I'm a Muslim. At a time it was far more difficult than now. We have people now who won't say I'm a Muslim. 
to the application religion, they got a crisis. Mm, I really want this job. I got a crisis. Mm. Like if I put moo, maybe they'll think that's a new religion. We're in California, new age, I'm a moo. I'm moo and my name is Mo. So I'm a moo mo. No, Ali stood in front of the cameras in the 1960s when there was still not this tectonic shift in the mentality of most Americans and said, I'm a Muslim, I believe in Allah, and if I have to stand in front of a firing squad for my faith, I'm going to stand in front of a firing squad and I'm not going to go halfway around the world to kill some people who didn't do anything to me. You can take my title. You can throw me in jail. You can kill me, but I'm not going to give it up. That's why Muhammad Ali is great. That's why people all over the world put his picture in the house and on the back of their buses, on the back of their cars, on the windshield of their cars. We have to ask ourselves, brothers and sisters, as we stand before the challenges of our times, what are we willing to sacrifice for Islam? What are we willing to give up for Islam? What stand are we willing to take for Islam? That's a question each and one of, every one of us have to ask ourselves on an individual basis and only each and every one of us can provide the answer. But if enough of us, if enough of us are willing to say, I'm not backing down, I haven't done anything to anyone, I haven't hurt anybody, I haven't done anything to justify this venom you're heaping on myself and my community, I'm a Muslim. I'm proud to be a Muslim. My name is Muhammad Abdullahi. Well, that's stretching it. Let's get another example. My name is Muhammad Abdul Majid. And I'm not giving up anything because I don't need to give up anything. I haven't hurt anyone. I haven't broken any laws. I've contributed to the well-being of my community, the uplift of my community, the safety of my neighbors, the dignity of my people. Why should I apologize? Why should I be on the defensive? Why should I feel like I'm some kind of a criminal? If someone tells you the sun isn't shining and the sun is indeed shining, if they say it's not shining until the cows come home, that doesn't change the reality before your eyes. The sun is there. It's in the sky. It's clear. It's 12 noon. There's not a cloud in the sky. The sky is bright and blue. They could say the sun isn't shining till the cows come home. And similarly, if someone says you're a terrorist, you're a wife beater, like this film we saw, go home and beat your wife, people in shock. I never laid a hand on my wife for good reason. She has three black belts. <laughs> <laughs> I never laid a hand on my wife. I never harmed anybody. I never thought about putting a bomb in anything. So why am I walking around here like I'm guilty of something? Brothers and sisters, we have to stand up in the name of Allah, relying on Allah, drawing our strength from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and show people through our character. That same video, tears brought to mind seeing those young girls marching by these hate-filled terrorists. Yes, they were terrorizing them with their hijabs on and their heads up high and marching on to do what they had to do. And that's an example for us. We have to forge on and do what we have to do. But we have to do it for the sake of Allah, not for the sake of ourselves. لَيْسَ لَكَ مِنَ الْأَمْرِ شَيْءٍ You have nothing to do with this. It's not about us. It's about others. It's not about me. It's about others. And these are the values that Islam is trying to keep alive in this world. When the whole world is saying, me, 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 we follow a prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who says, ummati, 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 my community, my community, my community. That's how we have to see things. I serve a community. I'm part of a community. 
And that's what my life is not about me. It's about them. And ultimately it's about my relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And my self-worth comes from those sources. My self-worth comes from me knowing that I make a valuable contribution to my community. And my self-worth comes from my relationship with Allah Ta'ala, knowing I submit to Allah. I get out of the bed in the morning when people are sleeping to pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. That's where my self-worth comes from. It doesn't come from what some people I don't even know and they don't even know me say about me. I feel worthless and down because people talking about me, do you know them? Do they know you? No. Then why are you concerned about what they say? How is your relationship with Allah? كيف حالك? How is your state with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How is your state with your brothers and sisters? Your Muslim brothers and sisters? How is your state with your non-Muslim neighbors and possibly relatives? Those are the sources of your self-worth. If something's wrong with that, you should be ashamed of yourself. And start fixing it. But if that's right, then you're right. And if you're right, you can begin building and aspiring for greatness. Brothers and sisters, let us be a great community. This world is crying out for greatness. There's mediocrity afoot in every realm. Every realm. You say, we're not going, and in, in, in the social realm, there's social mediocrity. There's political mediocrity. No, we're going to be a great community. We're going to be great individuals. And as we said, not that we're all going to be president or in Congress or something. Our greatness can be in our relationship with our spouse. I'm going to be a great husband. I'm going to be a great wife. I'm going to be a great parent. I'm going to be a great child. I'm going to be a great student. I'm going to be a great janitor. Whatever I do, I'm going to do it in the best of ways. If we can do that, if we can commit ourselves to that, we will be a great community. And when the annals of history are recorded, long after we're dead and gone, the impact that we have on our community, our nation, and our world will be noted, and it will be noted well. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المؤمنين يا قوم استغفروا الله استغفر الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا إن الله وملائكته يصعدون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا أفرغ علينا الصبر وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا أفرغ علينا الصبر وثبت أقدامنا وتوثنا مسلمين وعف عنا وغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من الهم والحزن ونعوذ بك من العجز والكسل ونعوذ بك من الجبن والبخل ونعوذ بك من غلبة الدين وقهر الرجال ونعوذ بك من الفقر إلا إليك ومن الذل إلا لك ومن الخوف إلى منك اللهم تقبل منا زدنا ولا تنقصنا كن معنا ولا تكون علينا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم انصر المسلمين في كل مكان وانصرنا في هذا البلد يا الله الله إن نسألك الهدى والتقى والغنى والعفاف والمغفرة أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أقم الصلاة يرحمني ورحمكم الله
He's so pious. The brother had millions of dollars and he left it all and he went into the desert to live with the nomads and to study in the middle of the Sahara Desert. That brother's so pious. And his shahwa, his hidden lust was fulfilled. No. We go wherever Allah puts us. If Allah puts us in the middle of Mauritania, we go out there and we be the best student out there. We don't complain about the malaria. <laughs> the one who's chasing after obscurity is a slave of obscurity, is a servant of obscurity. And the one who's chasing after fame and to be in front of the people is a slave of fame. And the one whom the two states are equal with him or her, that is the servant of Allah. Come, <laughs> best student out there. MashaAllah. And if Allah puts us in a situation to make a billion dollars, we're the best businessman. We got the nicest suits. They're all halal. We got the John J or John G or whatever, a non silk silk tie. It's halal. We give it its full right. So he also says later on, Men arad al khafa' with my billions. No, he says, no, I want to go to Mauritania to study Islam. And on the surface is laudable. Subhanallah, Zahid. He wants to renounce the world. That is so nice. He wants to study. He wants to go in the desert and not be tempted by all the fitna of modern society. That's so nice. But it's a hidden shafia, a uh, uh, shahwa khafia. It's a hidden lust because he really wants the people to say, and instead of saying, Alhamdulillah, boy, I can do some work now. All you people hating on the Muslims, you're in trouble. Because I'm taking my billions, I'm opening up a Muslim satellite station. I'm taking my billions, I'm building youth centers and everywhere there's some Muslims. So the kids will have a place to hang out with each other. I'm taking my billions, I'm going to pay for Zaytuna College with my billions. They don't have to scrounge anymore because I'm here.